Give me a word, Ken. Your word is palm tree. I got that's two words. Do it. Do it anyway. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Tell me what to do. (laughs) Palm trees. They're a weird looking tree when you go visit like California and stuff like that. They look dead most of the time. It's like only the top of them that actually has some green. Well, I think you're supposed to like trim off the dead parts, right? Are you? I think so. I think maybe just the streets aren't like kept up very well. Hold on one second. Hey, welcome to the Over Talking Podcast with your hosts, Ken and CJ. Say hi, Siege. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. This is the show where we usually talk over TV shows and movies that shows them by our guests, but it's episode 350. Is that right? For all acquaintances. Be- <laughs> no. No? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Wow. That's, that's weird. Yeah. So if, if my math is right, that means we've been doing the show for 12 years. No, no, no. Dang. Okay. I'm but like almost seven, I think. Right. Like that's still a lot. Is that real? <laughs> I didn't I actually take so, the time. Because there's, there's 52 weeks in a year, right? So yeah. we've been doing yeah. it for 350 weeks. We've put out an episode every single week for 350 weeks. It's crazy. And look where it's gotten us. It's incredible. <laughs> It's so different. So famous and successful. It's amazing. You know, well respected if, in the movie community. If you want to make a difference in your world, start a podcast and just stick with it for seven years and it'll it'll pay dividends. You're a couple of cis straight white guys <laughs> in their thirties. <laughs> yes. Look, there's not enough representation yeah. in the podcast community from cis it's just great white guys. So we want to hear your voice. It needs to be heard. <laughs> I, I think a lot of people don't don't understand that like when you when you're a straight white guy in your 30s you get handed a podcast. It's not it, like yeah. we didn't choose to do this. It's we're being forced. Right, and you would think we'd be used to it by being handed most everything in our lives, but uh, <laughs> it, it's something that just kind of surprises you. So <laughs> yeah, blindsided. Yeah, you got these freaking overlords over our back all the time yeah, pushing our buttons, telling downsides. us what to do. Yeah. Ken, welcome back to the mainland. Thank you. Welcome back yourself. I, I was in the mainland, but yeah, I'm well, back in Welcome back to Illinois, at least. Yeah. You were on your honeymoon. I was on my honeymoon. Meg and I finally took our honeymoon six months late, but we timed it so that we left her in the cold. Yes. And uh, we went to Hawaii. That's right. You did it perfectly. No, there's no, yeah. everyone do your honeymoon when you feel like it. This, this, traditions yeah. are dumb. Don't go right after the wedding. You don't have to do that. No. Everyone I've talked to who has gone right after the wedding has said, don't do that (laughs) because the wedding is stressful enough, like getting everything, all your ducks in a row for that. And then to have to also be planning and packing for and stressing yourself out over going to a trip right after, even if it is a nice, you know, trip with your new wife, but just plan it out so that it works out well for you. And, and, and and it worked out great for us. It was, it was an amazing time. Um, That's great to hear. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm definitely just a smooth, cool, cool cucumber when it comes to traveling. No stress at all, no anxiety. <laughs> so I definitely would love to do that after the most stressful day of your life. No, God, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm awful with, uh, with traveling. Like I'm not awful, but I hate. Well, I don't hate. But anyway, I get super stressed out in the airports, and yes, until I'm on the plane. Yeah, and I know that there isn't a baby right next to me. <laughs> um, I'm like just worrying about all the po- worst possible scenarios. Like is this going to work out? Are they going to like make me check my bag? Even like the little things that really wouldn't throw everything off, but that I just worry about. And I, uh. yeah, no, I will say I am awful to travel with. I, uh, Emily just kind of <laughs> surrenders herself to me and, be, and just is like, okay, just tell me what time we're leaving yeah. and stuff. That's I know so you have it all too. planned out. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I do. And I would like to leave at this time. And yeah. yes, thank you. Yeah. At one point I, it was on our way back, but um, we were in the, whatever the Kauai's airport is. And we, it's just like a short flight back to Honolulu. And we got there so early that I was able to like witness the loading pattern for the flight before us. Cause it loads like every hour basically. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to go scope it out. And Meg's like, cool. You, you <laughs> let me know what to do. I'll be here. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I don't really, I don't think I relax until like, we're at the hotel or Airbnb, yeah. and then I'm finally like, okay, we did it. We're here. Yeah, because even even before then, you're like, oh, am I going to get a good room? Yeah. Like, is it... I got to get like, an Uber to get there from the airport right. and sit in traffic. Right, right. 
Super stressful. All right. Now that the stressful stuff's out of the way, you want to hear about the fun stuff that we did? Yes, please. So we we were there for a while. We were there for like a week and a half. We spent two nights in Oahu, which isn't the big island. I guess I was confused before, but it's just the island has the main airport in Honolulu. Mm. But yeah, we stayed there for two nights, um, and one of the nights was Valentine's Day and Meg's birthday, so we got to celebrate that there, which was really nice. Yeah. But we didn't really do much there other than that. We we kind of just hung out on the beach, and I mean, the first yeah. day was a travel day, and then the last day was a travel day, and so it was, we're like, we can either go hiking and see the stuff on this island, or we can just sit on the beach, and we were like, let's just do that. So Yeah, that's what you're there perfect. to do. Relax. Yeah, Enjoy exactly. the beach. We didn't beat ourselves up over it, so... We did that, and that was great, and we ate a bunch of good food there, and then we flew to Kauai, where we stayed for eight nights there at the Grand Hyatt, and we, like, my mom pulled some strings because she's a super traveler person, and we got, like, this awesome suite that looked oh, yeah. out over the ocean, and uh, it was it was an amazing room, and the hotel was so nice. Uh, there were, like, I don't know. 12 pools like there were a ton of pools Jeez. like like layers of pools and then uh, then the beach wow. as well yeah the weather was great every day we were there surprisingly like it rained one day but it didn't really affect our plans nice and everything worked out really well we did a bunch of fun activities too we um, yeah i saw you zip lined yeah i haven't posted everything yet but the one thing we did was zip lining and it was at the the longest zip lines in hawaii or something like that one was a mile and sorry a half mile long you went like sixty miles an hour on it. Jeez, how it long? Like, awesome. how long is that to go a half mile? How long uh, are you up there? Technically, if you're going sixty miles an hour, it'd be thirty seconds. But you're like speeding up and slowing down, so it's yeah. longer. It's, it was like a full minute. It was super long. It was awesome. I went upside down. <laughs> I went Superman position. It was it was so much fun. Meg did not do any of that. She just <laughs> went normal holding yeah. onto the, the handlebars, but. Have no, you ever ziplined before? Like no. like on a long zipline? Like I hadn't I hadn't either. I had done like ropes courses and stuff, but No, I for sure would also be in the sitting position. I definitely would yeah. not be. Even the Superman ride at Six Flags, I'm like, uh, I don't know about this one. <laughs> that ride sucks. Yeah, I only did one each like upside down and Superman, like just on one of the like twelve that we did. When you say upside down, can you paint a picture? I'm picturing like hung by your feet and you're just like dangling. You know Spider Man? Yeah, exactly. It's, this, it's literally the Spider Man position because you you have these handlebars like right above your head that you, you're supposed to hold on to if you're going normally. Um, but what you do is they and you're just you're held into a harness and there's a a rope that goes from basically the handlebars to the center of your chest. Well, what you do is you they help you out, but at the beginning you flip over and put your feet on those handlebars and then you just dangle your arms up in the air. So it kind of looks like the Spider-Man position and you just go that way until you get to almost the end and then they make you flip back over to, for like a safe landing. But Dang. yeah, that hurt. Yeah. <laughs> it was not, it's like, did you was feel okay with the no, blood that, rushing to your head the entire time too? I don't know. It was, it was fun, but I like the harness dug into my thighs and I was like, nah, this is not, I'll, yeah. I'll go back to normal. Thank you. But I wanted to try the different positions because yeah. like, I don't know when I'm going to do this again. I might as well right. give it a shot. What was, okay, what was, I always ask this from people who have traveled, one of your favorite meals, one of the, one that yeah. sticks out into your head? So the Grand Hyatt had uh, two restaurants uh, on the resort, and I think both of the best meals that we had were in one of those places. Um, but one place was called um, Stevenson's Library, and it was a like library-themed sushi restaurant. So like even the the hostess who like seats you, and I don't know if maybe she was dressed like this normally or not, but she was dressed like a librarian at least in my eyes with like the glasses and like a long. She had a lanyard. <laughs> no, with her school ID. Yeah, but yeah, there's like books everywhere, and the uh, the menu and all the menu items have like book themed names. Like the one of the drinks is the Grape Gatsby. You know, nice. anyway, it's stupid, but. Uh, <laughs> But the food, the sushi was some of the best I've ever had. Like it was so fresh and so good. That's awesome. Yeah. That's impressive. Cause yeah, I don't, at least in my experiences of hotels, the food is usually like, eh, it's, it's passable, but that's, yeah, that sounds like yeah. it's a really nice place. It, yeah, for sure. I, I think that might be why, um, it, it seemed like a lot of the hotels in Hawaii in general have like 
some of the bigger restaurants in them because we went oh, to okay. Tide Pools and that was in another restaurant or sorry, another hotel. And then the other place that was really, really good was in, again, the Grand Hyatt, but it was called Tide Pools. Did I just say Tide Pools? What did I say? Yeah. Fuck. Okay. I meant to say Monkey Pod before. That's where we went for Valentine's Day. Monkey Pod? Monkey Pod. Oh, funny story. So we went to Monkey Pod for Valentine's Day on Oahu. The next day we fly over to Kauai and we go to a restaurant called The Beach House, which is like right on the ocean. It's very nice. It's like everyone kept recommending it to me. And we get there and it's the exact same menu as Monkey Pod because apparently Monkey Pod also owns that restaurant. So for two nights in a row, we're like, oh, shit, Look at this is exactly what we just had, except 10 bucks more expensive for some reason. <laughs> anyway, we got different stuff on the menu. But um, yeah, anyway, a lot of, lot of great seafood and, uh, and poke, and, and it was really, really, really good. Nice. But yeah, we, we did other fun stuff, though, besides ziplining. We went, um, we went mountain tubing. What? Do you know what that is? No. Yeah. What is that? So Meg found this one. It's um, like this is the only place in Kauai apparently that does it, but you get in like an inner tube into like an actual stream slash river and basically lays a river down it, but like much faster than a lazy river and through like mile long tunnels and stuff. Dang. They give you like a, a headlamp that you have to turn on when you go in the tunnels so that you can see. That was a lot of fun. It's like little like rapids kind of except in an inner tube. Yeah, I just Googled it. And yeah, people, you're having to wear like full helmets and gloves and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely not a lazy river. No, not a lazy river. Just the inner tube thing is the only thing that kind of yeah. ties it to that. But that was that was so much fun. That seems really cool. We also went uh, kayaking up a river to a hike to a sec- quote unquote secret waterfall that like tons of guides had a ton of people there. But uh, Meg and I actually swam out to the waterfall and and uh took a picture under that that was really nice that we we did a lot of uh a lot of that fun kind of adventure stuff um oh fuck i went whale watching on a boat like out on a boat the ocean? yeah yeah so we we got on like a whale watching tour meg and i went on it and it was it was like a very small boat on a very windy day Uh-oh. with very choppy waters Uh-oh. and the whole time leading up to it meg had like brought Dramamine and C bands and even like the little patches that are like supposed to prevent seasickness. Because uh-huh. we were super worried about getting seasick. And the whole time leading up to it, I was like, oh, I'm gonna be fine. I, I kind of forgot that like I also get seasick and I for some reason was thinking I could just confidence myself out of it. <laughs> but I did take Dramamine beforehand and put on those C band things. Uh, but man, it was so fucking choppy that as soon as we actually did see whales and dolphins, by the way, like nice. dolphins flipping and whales like cool. feeding and stuff. Like I think there was a mom whale that was feeding a baby whale and you know, breaching and stuff. We saw a lot of really cool things. But as soon as I saw that and took my eye, my sight off of the the horizon, yeah, uh, then I was I was like, oh, I'm gonna throw up. That's it. I'm, I'm done. And. Uh, Meg's like, no, you got it, you got it. And then I look back at the horizon and I was able to eventually control myself and didn't ever throw up, but I couldn't look at the whales anymore. Like I had to just keep looking at the island because I was like, I can't, I can't look. Otherwise I'm going to get immediately sick. So I saw it and then uh, for a minute. And then uh, after that, there was a lot more whale stuff that I didn't get to see. So, (laughs) Well, I guess that's better than like puking your guts out on the side of a boat. Yeah. For sure. Uh, I would have maybe put a damper on the day. Uh, they had buckets there. They were passing out to a couple of people. I don't think anyone actually threw up, but Just in uh, case. it was it was like worst possible conditions for for that. Dang. And then when we when we went back in after we saw the whales, we're going faster and going over waves and. I was fine by that point as long as long we were moving and we're just like rocking in the ocean. I was okay. We were going over some pretty big waves very fast, and it would like thud into the water after that. Uh, and I turned to Meg and I said, "Tonight we should watch the Perfect Storm. Like the, <laughs> it's the perfect pairing movie for this." And did and, you? And uh, and that's what we did. So if you're looking for a movie <laughs> recommendation, uh, we watched the Perfect Storm. And what I can recommend is to not watch it after having felt seasick earlier in the day, because uh, <laughs> that is not a good time. Uh, we literally had to turn it off halfway because we both felt seasick watching it uh, wow. in our hotel room. So, 
Uh, good movie, Marky Mark, and uh, uh, the other half of Talladega Nights uh, was was in the movie as well. John C. Riley. Huh. I don't um, think I've ever heard of that. Really? Did you end up uh, finishing it then? Yeah, we finished it another night. Oh, okay. um, George Clooney. It's a huge movie. Oh. All right. Well, what's your rating then? Okay. So on Letterbox, again, you can find me at KDRSC01. I gave it three and a half stars. Okay. Uh, I, but I said, it's fine. Um, and then I, I guess I don't really want to say much more if you'll watch it. So because I talk about the ending, maybe I should mark this as a spoiler. But anyway, you should watch it. It's, a, it's an excellent movie. It's not. Hilarity does not ensue, though, so, you know, be warned. (laughs) It does have a 46% on Rotten Tomatoes. What? Yeah. I thought this was up for, like, an Oscar or something. Maybe I'm wrong. 63% audience score. Well, that's only slightly better than Madam (laughs) Webb. That's not great. Huh. Maybe everyone was just seasick right before they watched it or something. Or maybe it just makes people seasick (laughs) to watch it. (laughs) That could be. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, that was a weird way to sum up my my honeymoon. But <laughs> you gotta uh, we had a great movie. time. <laughs> it was very on brand. Yeah, it was a long, um, like maybe the longest vacation Megan I have ever taken uh, together. I, I'm sure I took longer vacations when I was younger with my family, but it's been forever since I've taken a long vacation like that, and this was perfect. So, Are you experiencing yeah. the post vacation blues where you're? You're ripped back into reality, and you're uh, like, oh, this sucks. I don't want to do any of this. I want to be back on vacation. A little bit. I felt very unmotivated um, the week after I got back. Um, yeah. It's like, I just, man, I don't know. I'm still in the vacation mindset. I'm not really in the, like, oh, yeah, I want to get I want to get stuff done at work now. I'm, I'm more like, I don't want to do anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I still don't want to do anything. <laughs> I want to wake up and do whatever I feel like, like a vacation. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, that yeah, that's fine. Uh Getting back into it, uh, but it was it was great. Super long, unstressful vacation. Uh, in Good, glad to hear it. The best possible things. Did you did you guys do you because you were in Kauai last year, right? Uh, no, this is a few years ago at this point. Was it a few years ago, okay. But yeah, gotcha. we just spent our we did two weeks, I think, or about some somewhere along those lines, maybe nice. like twelve days or something like that. But yeah, all on Kauai. But we split our time between the north part of the island and the southern part of the island. Okay. Yeah, we, we meant to go up to the north part and see the Waikame, whatever, the canyon, the big canyon. Yeah, uh, we, we did that. To that. Okay. Cool. We went hiking, yeah, up there. We kept hearing from everyone that, that that's the thing to do, and we just never did it. But It's beautiful, but like as somebody who's afraid of heights, there were times where Emily oh. would be like, go over there, I'm going to take a picture. I'm like, I'm not getting any closer than I am now. I can't, <laughs> I'm not walking up to the cliff, like, no. Huh. This is as further, it was, yeah, I, I'm not going to get any closer. I, I'll i start to, like, my knees will shake or something, and I can't do it. <laughs> Dang. There's no, like, guardrails or anything. You can just walk off no? the cliff. Jesus. Yeah, we, we, we already decided we got to go back, because there's a lot of stuff we didn't see, but that'll probably be in 10 years or something. <laughs> That's yeah. I'm both Emily and I agree that that's like one of the best vacations we've ever taken. That we sort of refer to that as our honeymoon, even though we had only just gotten engaged. I think at that point, <laughs> but that that's that's the one that like feels like a honeymoon because you're in like paradise yeah. and get to, yeah. to relax a lot and stuff. Exactly. Yeah, that's like I don't know. At least for us, like the ideal vacation of like tropical. You can relax, but there's also some fun stuff to do and some fun hikes and stuff. So, yeah, it's perfect. A little expensive when it comes to like <laughs> food and stuff, but <laughs> dude, we we paid for everything like uh, hotels and flights with points, so we were fine there. But oh my god, did we spend so much money on food? It was ridiculous. Yeah. Every yeah. meal you ate out, it, you have to spend at least like 150 bucks. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Ah. Even I'm glad like the hotel like had breakfast at least, so we didn't have to pay for uh, that, but. Nice. Yeah, we would get, we got a couple lunches, I think, from even like food trucks. And even that was like, I don't know, 15, 20 bucks a person for just yeah. like, yeah, we did but the same. I get it. They got to like import a ton of stuff, which is expensive to do. They're on an island. It makes sense. And the whole thing is basically a tourist destination. So they're yeah. going to gouge you anyway. But yeah, anyway. Worth it. Expensive. No, worth it. Worth it. Yeah. Just maybe got to wait a little while to recoup some funds before going back out there yeah and then you went on a vacation too i did 
I will say too, when I was in Hawaii, that was also during my birthday. That's quite quite a way for Meg to spend her birthday, in my opinion. Yeah, Um, because we also did it in February, which also is the time to go to Hawaii if you live in Chicago. (laughs) Yeah, it was it was the perfect time to go. Yeah, we celebrated what three occasions: Valentine's Day, Meg's birthday, and our honeymoon. So. Several places we went to for dinner gave us free champagne because we just kept mentioning it's our honeymoon. It was nice. It was very nice. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. For this year, for my birthday, we decided to go to Austin, Texas. Nice. Never been. Uh, Emily had not either. Uh, we just wanted wanted to go somewhere warm, except for the fact that the Saturday on my birthday was like 43 degrees and overcast. <laughs> oh, bummer. Yeah. While what? we were there. Yep. It gets that cold? Apparently. Jeez. Even though it was it was 70 and sunny the day before. Wow. Well, that sounds like Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, lately. Climate change, baby. <laughs> it's, yeah. all, it's all weird now. Uh... But yeah, it was we had a um, ton of good food, but it did kind of put our, our main plans were like, well, it's going to be nice out. So I just want to like walk around and be outside all day. So that chilly day kind of put a damper on those plans. But we did then call an audible and we're like, well, we can't be outside. Do you want to go see a movie? <laughs> Let's go to the Alamo Draft House. Oh, cool. One of those. Yeah. Yeah. Which they're, they either have or are opening one in Chicago. There, Might There is exist. one in Chicago. I've just never been. I did enjoy that you, they put their popcorn in a, like a metal bowl instead of like a bucket or something like that. Wow. I, I like that more environmentally friendly because then they can just like wash it huh. um and it is unlimited popcorn i'm pretty sure it's real butter too right uh maybe i'm not sure yeah huh. but yeah you get you get a whole menu to order stuff from and then you like write down your food and somebody comes by and takes this little piece of paper and then like brings nice. your food to you to your seats that's great and they're the big the big loungy seats that go back that's the way to do it yeah that you like to take a nap in? When we, whenever the next Fast and Furious comes out, we have to go to the uh, Chicago Alamo Draft House to see it. <laughs> okay. That's, that's it. I, I'm down for that. If it ever does, right? Yeah. Well, we'll see. Yeah. We gotta, we gotta fit Fast and Furious into every episode, apparently. We gotta, we gotta talk about it. <laughs> Absolutely. They're paying us to talk about it. <laughs> I can somehow hear that Steve is smiling when he's listening to this. <laughs> Yeah, Austin was great. Uh, we did have a a fun. Okay, first I will I'll talk I'll talk about two things. One, some friends of ours just happened to also be in town in Austin, Texas, while we were there, so we got to meet up with them, and they cool. were like, "Hey, we're going to this thing called Chicken Shit Bingo. Do you guys want to come?" And we we're like, "Sold. Whatever that is, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great." So what it is. Instead of bingo, where you need to get, like, all the letters and stuff like that, it's just a big board of, like, numbered uh, squares. And this big board is put into a cage. And then they throw seed across the board. (laughs) And they stick a chicken in there. And so you you buy tiles ahead of time. Oh, my God. And then the chicken goes in the cage. Everyone gets real quiet. <laughs> and you just kind of stand around for 15 to 30 minutes or so. And you wait for the chicken to take a shit. And then whatever square it shits on, that person wins. If you had that tile. Are you sure you were in Austin, not Tijuana? Like, this sounds like not Texas. It was all very, like, we were a little worried that it might get into, like, animal cruelty territory. Yeah. But it, it was not. Everyone was okay. like... No one was shaking the cages or anything. Like everyone okay. literally got quiet and was like very respectful. Okay, good. Um, but the the winner, at least when we were there, you win like over a hundred dollars is what was going on. Like wow. And I for I think the buy in for a tile was maybe like two or five dollars or something like that. I forget. Dang. But it, it felt very much this was outside behind a bar, like in a <laughs> parking lot. Of so course. it was like very tailgate energy. People had even bought like or brought lawn chair type things and like set up camp and wow. like, picnic tables and stuff. Um, so that was very entertaining. But on the we took in that was sort of a little outside of like the main city. So we took an Uber to get there and we're chatting with this. Uh, and I want to say he's a very nice, friendly Uber driver. We like 
mentioned that, you know, we're here out of town. He picked us up at a hotel. So context clues <laughs> that we don't live there. <laughs> he was giving us recommendations and stuff like that. We mentioned that we're from Chicago. He's like, oh, so you guys here for like work or for the, there happened to be a, like a half marathon going on at the same time. So it's like, oh, oh you're here for that. And we're like, no, just wanted to like get out of the winter and go somewhere warm kind of thing. And he was like, oh yeah, I forget that like you Northerners do that. What the fuck? As if this was like <laughs> some weird concept. He was just here. It's like, yeah, man, you mean vacation? Like going somewhere yeah, you don't what? live? <laughs> I was like, that's a that's kind of a funny comment. Also, I've never been referred to as a Northerner, but I Northerner. that makes sense. <laughs> I, I don't I refer to people as Southerners, do I? I guess I guess we do. Yeah, I don't know. We are we are pretty far north when you think about it. We're like we are two states yeah. away from Canada. But I just right. thought that was kind of funny. And then so we were talking about that of like, oh yeah, like you know, this is nothing. It's, you know, our friends told us it was like 19 degrees back at home. So this is great um, kind of thing. And then you could tell he, again, he was very nice, but he, he was kind of like, so no offense or anything, but then like, why do you live there? It's <laughs> <That's, laughs> like, Hey man, why do you live here? <laughs> what? Like, yeah, I could ask the same thing. This is in the same conversation where he also told us that like, the following summer set a new record for most consecutive days where it was like over a hundred degrees. I was like, Ooh. that sounds awful. Why do you live here? Yeah. Uh, do I really have to answer this? You know, you, you don't choose where you grow up and then usually you kind of stay around that place. Right. <laughs> Cause so, like, you got family there and friends already. And I, I really seem totally <laughs> with it, but okay. Yeah. I, I really got a kick out of that. It was like, I would much rather do like 15 degree weather than have to suffer through 110 degree weather for days at a yeah. time. Yeah, I'd rather be cold than hot. Yes, for sure. always. You can add more layers. You can't walk around naked. Nope. <laughs> so that was just a fun interaction we had on the way to chicken chip bingo. <laughs> um, yeah, I will say every meal was great. We had good Chinese food was like the first meal when we got there. It was this kind of like fusion of like Chinese and Texas where our main dish was uh, brisket fried rice. Mm. That was fantastic. Got to go to a Voodoo Donuts, which I'm a, a fan of. Oh, nice. I had both donuts and ice cream on my birthday, which was great. <laughs> Perfect. Good. <laughs> and here's the part where everyone's going to get mad at us. We had no barbecue food <laughs> while we were there. Oh, that, that's fine. I don't like barbecue personally, so I, I don't I just, it. Yeah, I like it okay, but I, I don't want a meal where it's just like just slabs of meat and that's all right. you're getting. Like I right. need, uh, I need like other stuff. Right. Yeah. I also have pretty much just given up beef altogether. So I, I don't really, yeah, it, it didn't seem worth it. We did walk by the famous like Franklin barbecue place just on happenstance on the way to a different restaurant. I was like, hey, there it is. I've seen it on TV shows. Cool. You got the smells then at least, right? Yeah, so, sure. That's half of the taste. Yeah. <laughs> it. We had a good time. I will say it's it's definitely a like car culture city. It's It seems huh. to be pretty hard to get around if you don't have a car. And we d I hate renting cars on vacation. I don't want to have to deal with driving. So huh. we did not do that. But all around, it was fun. We we went to like a cool dive bar. Like I said, every meal was great. I don't think we had like one mediocre meal. Um, we ended up going ended up ended up going back to a restaurant as like our last meal in the morning before we left because it was so good. I had nice. like one of the best. It was like a vegetarian patty melt. It, that was and they had the best Ooh. French fries. Cool. And then so we went there for breakfast the next day, and it was they had they had it was um, blue corn. Banana chocolate chip pancakes. Whoa. So instead of normal flour, you're using the like, like how you get blue corn tortilla chips. It was yeah. that. So the pancakes. So they were blue? Like, yeah. They had oh, this like blue them? With bananas yeah. and chocolate chips. It was great. That sounds good. Very tasty. Was a little disappointed with most of the coffee I was getting. That kind of made me sad a little bit. There was like one mm. place that had good stuff. Maybe I'm just spoiled here or something. But <laughs> Could be. Yeah, just like, oh, man, this, like, you're a coffee shop. This is what you're supposed to do well. <laughs> yeah, what? 
yeah. So I don't know. That's that's my own problem with uh, caffeine addiction, I guess. Or, but yeah, maybe you, maybe you have like a specific taste for Chicago coffee or something. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, shout out to Hex Coffee. They're they're one of the best. Uh, <laughs> but so, oh yeah, so that that the movie I ended up seeing on vacation. Love that we both saw a movie on vacation. Absolutely. Very brand. Uh Was the movie Argyle? Have you heard of this? Oh, I I see. It's all over my Apple TV, but I have not seen it yet. It's a lot of fun. Okay. It's like it's like a purposely over the top spy thriller action movie. And there's all of the famous people in it. Yeah. yeah. It's not a single face I was like, who's that? It's like everyone is recognizable. Who who voices the CGI cat? <laughs> the cat does not talk in this one, unfortunately. Oh, it doesn't, doesn't talk either. No. I wish. <laughs> That's that's the star of the movie right there. Yeah, that's that's Argyle, right? Is yeah, that's that? the titular okay. Argyle. <laughs> yep. But does it get a voice? Wow, strange. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was a choice they made. It was an artistic choice. <laughs> Is it based on something? It sounds kind of familiar for some reason. I don't think so, but I hmm. could be wrong. It actually had kind of some similarities to *Romancing the Stone*, and that like the main character oh. is an author. She has a cat. <laughs> Goes on an adventure. Huh. Um, yeah, like if you pull up the cast, it's Bryce Dallas Howard, Sam Rockwell, Henry Cavill, John Cena, Dua Lipa, Brian Cranston, uh, Samuel L. Jackson, Catherine O'Hara. Like it's all famous people. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm <laughs> I'm seeing that it got a 33% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh no! But a 72% audience score. What is up with that? Why does that keep happening? I don't know. Critics are too, like, I don't know, snobby or something. I guess. I Weird. gave this a, I gave this three stars on Letterboxd, and I'm even tempted to give it three and a half. I, I feel like I should update my score. Because I, I left it being like, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. Is it the best movie ever made? No, but it was, movies are supposed to be entertaining, and that was very entertaining. All right, with that many stars, it's like, yeah. it's gotta be okay. It's And it's like, the whole premise is that it is over the top. Like it's supposed to be mm. like there. I won't spoil it, but there's one sequence towards the end where you're just like, they are absolutely just having fun with this now. Like this is not meant to be serious. Like it's just <laughs> a fun time. Um, I left it being like, that was, it was a little long. There were parts where I was like, huh, we're still going with this. Huh? Okay. It's over two hours. I think like two nineteen or something like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. But yeah, two hours and 19 minutes. So it, felt, it, it does feel a, a little long at times, but I had a blast, especially getting to go on like a shitty day anyway, going to an Alamo draft house, getting that experience. Nice. It was a good time. So what, what was your favorite food then that you had out of everything? Oh, probably the, I think the like veggie patty melt. The, yeah. the French fries were battered and came with like parsley and Parmesan sprinkled on them too. Nice. There was most meals there, like on way more than one occasion, I felt like bad afterwards because I was like, I am so <laughs> full because this food is so good. I regret finishing all those French fries, but I couldn't help myself. They're so delicious. Nice. Which I think is a good sign if you're mostly walking around being like, oh my God, I'm stuffed. Yeah. Yeah. How, how affordable was the food there? I mean, it's a city, right? So it's probably not nearly as bad as Kauai was. No, yeah, definitely not that. I I think it was pretty reasonable. I would say in line with Chicago or maybe even a tad cheaper. It yeah. Okay. I I wasn't I had no like sticker shock or anything. Nice. And we ended up going to a show. I forgot about that part. We we saw uh, oh. uh this band Husbands that Emily introduced me to and is a a fan of uh that just happened to we saw I was like, "Oh, hey, while we're there, they're playing. Let's go see them." Oh, that's I do want to talk about this part. So, the opening band is from Austin. They're called Bean Dead. Mm-hmm. We get there when their opening band is playing. We're looking around in the crowd. Very cool venue. The back wall is basically your outdoors. Like your, the show is like inside, but you can just as easily walk outside and like huh. still be at the show, kind of thing. Cool. We look around and and I start to notice there's these these dudes in full black tie suits wearing sunglasses and. And when I say sunglasses, picture what like Agent Smith wears in the Matrix. Yeah. Okay. And earpieces. So very what? Matrix agent vibe. 
And there's like five of these guys, and they all happen to be like, yeah, like six six. <laughs> there's like these huge people. Are those the husbands? They, they're not the husbands. <laughs> but at first, I'm like, I see like one or two, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of fun that like security at this venue goes all out. That's interesting. <laughs> but then as the, the night goes on, three of them stand at the front of the stage, but facing the audience just with their arms crossed. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, this is a bit like they start to like take their hand into their earpiece and, and kind of like nod and just gesture to like, or like point at people or whatever. And then as the set goes on, a song starts playing and they all start jumping up and down and dancing along to it. I was like, what? Oh, they're just like friends of the band that are, <laughs> are That's doing this crazy. Like, as a bit. I, wow. I thought it was a great idea. It was very entertaining. We <laughs> ended up talking to one of them at the merch booth, but he was like, he was very drunk at that point. <laughs> Emily was kind of like, Hey, you know, what's, what's the deal with all this? And he was like, Oh, we're security for the band. But you know, with security, it's more like you want to, predict of the future of where you need security. So we uh, it gave some weird <laughs> explanations. Okay. Like, All right, cool, man. <laughs> so yeah, it was, it was a good time. It was a good show. And it was like, you know, a, a 10 minute walk from our hotel. So it was great to just head over there and head back. Yeah. And husbands nice. had the entire time. They, the back wall behind the stage was a giant projector screen. And they had these like, very cool trippy colorful videos going on and during their whole set so i just was like watching that the entire time i was like this is they they were they had a good idea to add more to their set because they're kind of just like a chill indie rock band ish gotcha nice yeah it was a good time awesome man well it sounds like we both had a very eventful couple weeks there yeah but now we're back to the grindstone bring you guys content every week instead of being Getting to choose what movies. We're back to being forced to watch movies. That's, that's correct, yeah. Except for the days that we just talk about whatever we want. So. Yep. <laughs> like today. Yeah. Uh, also, I guess just to say, given that this is a 350 episode, apologies to anyone who has said anything nice about the show and I give an awkward reaction. I, I am not good at that, but thank you, and I really appreciate it. Uh, if you've ever texted one of us or mentioned it in person or whatever, it does mean a lot. Thank you, and hopefully I at least said the words thank you to you, and if not, I'm sorry. And thank you to all the people who have not reached out to me about this show ever. So. Yeah. yeah, do more people want <laughs> Ken's number? I feel like I get the text from people a lot of the time. Yeah, you reach out to CJ if you need to get at me. Yeah. I'll pass along my number. Yeah, I'll, I'll be the inbox, and I can take them in and pass them along. Yeah. Or where else can they reach us, CJ? You can follow us on all the things at Overtalking Pod or email us directly. Ken will read that. He's he is on top of the emails. I'm on he, the emails. Yeah. I you am, see them uh, before I even know we I'm have I'm an them. inbox zero guy, so yes. get it out of there if there's nothing. You can email us at overtalkingpod at gmail.com. Call or text us. You can text both of us at USA Cat 1591 or the real number is yep. in the show notes. I don't actually remember what it is. Or go to our website, overtalkingpod.party. Type in the word of your favorite movie. See if we've ever covered it. Maybe we have. And if we shit on it, it, it was deserved. We stand by our opinions. We're yep, correct. Exactly. Yeah, we're, we're the You're wrong source of in truth thinking here, that's a good so. Um, All the contact info is in the show notes, too. So, you know, if you want to know what actually USA Cat is, just look down there. It's super yeah. easy. And I actually did get an email earlier saying that the Over Talking Overlords, in, in celebration of our 350th episode, are giving us the week off. Oh, wow. Uh, so they're not going to come by. Um, <laughs> for but, this episode. For this episode. But they did gently remind me in the email to remind me to remind you, if you like the show, let's go on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and rate and review. Reviews sort of help people find this podcast. Also, we spend in the money and advertising. So if you like the show, please tell a friend and spread the word. We'd really appreciate it. Thank you. That's it. That's it. That's it. 350 uh, more episodes coming at you. And uh, <laughs> oh, stay with us. And uh, this will never, never die. Okay. All right. So we will hit that 12 year <laughs> anniversary, huh? Uh, yeah, maybe. We'll see. See you next week. Love you. Bye. Bye. The 350th episode of the Over Talking Podcast was produced by Ken and CJ, edited by CJ. Music by Justin Peters. Logo by Nate Richards. Check out Nate's work on Instagram at Nate Richards Designs.